You're going to reach a point where you'll be working with lots of data and the last thing you want to do is feel overwhelmed. But how do you actually handle saving massive amounts of data, you know, in the Swift data? Well, today we're going to see how we can improve the performance by saving a lot of data. Trust me, we ain't playing, man. We're saving a lot of data today <laughs> and best practices and tools to help us inspect the performance of our app. All right, cool. So basically what we've got here is our project and it's just a simple app here where you have two screens. You have a screen for the home view and essentially what's gonna happen is that when you tap on this button, it's going to simulate fetching some characters and saving it in a database. So if I tap on this, you'll see that we have a list of characters and it's just all basically being saved in our Swift data. Now, right now, what we're doing is we're actually generating 10 characters. So it's not really too bad in terms of performance. And if I was to run this on the simulator, you'll see that we actually don't really get any kind of lag. It's all good. Now, we're only loading 10 characters, right? But what would happen is if I was to go like absolutely nuts and I thought, you know what? Let's load like a hundred thousand or a million. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So we're gonna do just that, man. We're gonna go balls to the wall, man, and try and load a million. So let's add in a million. If I can, if I can count this, um, I think that might be ten million. Hey, we said we're gonna go hard, right? So let's go with ten. <laughs> so now when I run this, let's see what happens. And you'll notice that our app here is now hanging so it's basically in a nutshell this is frozen right so nothing's actually going on and you'll notice that basically it's hanging right so what's actually going on here well essentially this code that we're running this is actually running on the main thread so this is taking up all of the resources and our app is trying to you know do this on that and because of that it's actually going to need to wait for this to finish before you can actually continue anything else which is not the best for user experience or app performance well first of all in xcode if you go to this tab here well, this option called the debug navigator you'll now see that on our cpu it's actually maxed out man like honestly on 99 you know percent and what we can do is we can choose this option here called profile and instruments and what this xcode tool will allow us to do using the instruments tool is allow us to actually inspect what's going on behind the scenes in terms of what code is being run on the main thread and causing any kind of hangs so if you hit profile and in instruments and then profile what you should see is this new window here and you'll have a whole bunch of options. Now I'm not gonna go over all of this stuff. Um, the only one I'm gonna go over now is threads, but if you want me to do a video where I go into more detail about how to use different things in this tool, then leave a comment in the comment section down below. So what we wanna do is select this option here, threads. And now that we've got this thread selected, I'm actually going to undo, you know, basically disable the breakpoints in our project and we'll continue running. And you'll now see that there's a whole bunch of stuff that will start going on, right? So if you actually choose your thread here, so you'll see here that there's a lot of 100% on the main thread here. So let's just go on to the main thread. And if I just scroll down, when I select the main thread here, you'll see all of this stuff here, right? Home view, you know, character in it. And this is basically showing us that all of our character code that we're using when we want to create a character and save a character is all being handled on the main thread, which is not the best. And you can see the for reach. And you can even see here that it's still actually going as well, which is not the best. So we don't want to put this on the main thread at all. Now, later on in this video, I'm actually going to show you some best practices on how to actually move this off the main thread and also some best practices and tips in terms of when you should actually put code specifically onto a you know separate thread that isn't the main thread as well. But if you're enjoying this video so far, feel free to check out the entire free course on my channel within this playlist. As you can see, whilst I'm absolutely hammering the memory on this. <laughs> And also as well, if you're enjoying it, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and as well as subscribe to the channel as well. So how can we actually get around absolutely spamming the memory of this and it's still, you know, it's still going? Well, to actually do this, we can actually use something called a model actor in Swift Data. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to actually isolate the container that we're actually creating our data on onto a isolated or separate, you know, thread. So if you go to the Swift documentation, you'll actually see two implementations of the model actor. Now the first one you'll see is a protocol and this has a whole bunch of properties that you can actually implement yourself, but there's an even easier way to actually use this protocol and that's by using the, you know, annotation or the Swift macro, which actually does all of this for you behind the scenes. And in our home view at the top, 
you know, we could just create this in a separate file, but I'm just going to do it all in one file. But in this file, what we can now do is we'll import Swift data and then we'll create our actor. So we're just going to say actor and we'll just call this cached data handler like so. Cool. And now what we want to do is actually mark this with the at model actor macro like so cool in this actor this is where we're actually going to handle creating and saving our data so we actually want a function here to help us do that so i'm going to create a function called persist now if you look at this function it's not doing anything too wild it just accepts an array of characters and it simply just loops through all the items and then saves it within the model context now you might be wondering and looking at this and thinking yo bro how did you just get a model context without defining it here well this is the really nice thing about using this model actor and it actually took me a while to figure out how to use this macro because i'll be honest right you might think i know everything but trust me yeah there's certain things i'm not good at one of it was animations and then other one i've discovered recently is definitely macros <laughs> <laughs> so if you actually want to see what's going on behind the scenes in terms of how you can actually get this model context if you select this macro here just select it and then go to editor and then expand macro you'll see that you actually get the implementation of what's going on behind the scenes so automatically behind the scenes this macro creates a model context for you and the container and actually sets its own container as well so you get your own isolated container and model context for you to do whatever it is that you want so let's just de-expand this. De-expand? Collapse. <laughs> is de-expand a word? Anyway, let's collapse this. And then you'll now see that, you know, we can just, we just need to literally just use this instead of, you know, where we were using our honor pair to create all these characters. So rather than having this honor pair, we actually want to, you know, create a task and use our actor. So I'm just going to create a task here. And just for, you know, you know to make things safe i'm going to make sure and explicitly put this on a background thread this just gives me clarity and peace of mind so i can sleep easy at night and we don't want to you know have this code here anymore we're just going to comment this out because we don't need it and instead in our task because if you look at our actor we actually pass in an array of characters so we'll create an instance of this cache so we say let cache is equal to cache handler and now you might be wondering what is the model container we're going to use here. So the model container we're going to use here is the container from our model context within this file. So let's pass this in where we say model context dot container like so. And then we're going to want to create all these characters. So I'm just going to say let characters and then we'll just copy our range here. And then now we'll use the map function so we'll use a high order function and then now that we have an array of characters the next thing we want to do is actually call our persist function so we'll have to use async await if you want to learn more about async await i actually do have a free course on my channel that covers everything about swift concurrency you should see it on the screen here and we'll say await and then we'll say cache dot persist and then the items is going to be our characters so we'll call this characters like so cool all right, sweet. So the first thing I want to do is actually just run this and see what happens. So let me just delete all this code. So let's just run this. And you'll now notice that our app actually doesn't hang anymore. So if I was to just actually just stop this from running and we'll hit a breakpoint again. Now we'll go to our CPU and we'll profile an instruments and we'll profile. You'll now see that you actually don't see the main thread here at all. We instead see this unnamed thread. So we're not actually doing work on the main thread anymore. So if I go into this unnamed thread by just expanding this, you'll now see that all the work is happening on this separate thread. So it's not actually blocking the main thread anymore. Now you might be wondering, all right, okay, Tons, like, you know, when or, or what scenarios would I actually want to use this um, so for me, it's when you need to actually cache a large data set in bulk. If you need to save data that the user doesn't need to see immediately, you know, such as like configuration and whatnot, or if you need to perform some kind of CRUD on a large data set. So let's say, for example, if you want to fetch all the data that we did in this video in bulk, that's what you should do. And if we actually look at our project, there actually is a small problem here. And the problem is, is that when we go to our characters view, this query from what I've saw actually executes on the main thread. 
So a better way to actually improve the performance of this even more would be to actually execute a fetch on a background thread as well. So in our actor, we just basically write a predicate to basically fetch some data. Now, if you want to learn more about Swift data, you can actually check out the free course on my channel, which actually covers a whole bunch of topics. And like I said, it's all free. So you can use the money to go and treat yourself to McDonald's. <laughs> but that's everything from me. I also have more playlists on my channel that cover more iOS topics that you might be interested in. But that's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.